Great, so uh, my name is Joe Wilcox and today we're going to be doing the crying and effects um, on the society. So then, first slide is the effects of crying. Now then, the effects of crying. So, crying and antisocial behaviour can have effects on making people feel scared. Um, so that would be in their own area and outside of their own area. So, me, I would be scared from Warsaw and also outside my area such as Birmingham, Wolverhampton and even out of the West Midlands. Um, so in some cases they might even feel scared in their own homes as the impact of crime can uh, impact you anywhere. So it can be when you're out with your mates, when you're on your own out or even in your own home. Uh, the impact of uh, antisocial behaviour is often making people feel uncomfortable. Um, or making them feel scared um, in the situation and they don't want to be in th that situation. Um, so an example of this would be youth. Now a lot of youth get seen as hanging around the streets or hanging around places like parks and fields. Now this might make people who are walking by feel uncomfortable and they might feel a little bit threatened or a little bit scared. Even though they're doing nothing wrong, they might put them off and it might uh, affect them and impact them. Um, so this is why there are a lot of reported crimes with youth um, and often the police will turn up and there would be nothing going on other than just them hanging around. Um, so then, the damage. Um, so damage, it's, a, it's, a, it's an effect on society as damaging uh, the community costs quite a bit of money. So if there's vandalism, damaging buildings, uh, houses, places like pubs when things, if any uh, fights or anything kicks off and damages stuff, this all comes out of the UK government or the insurance's money. And eventually, if it keeps on happening in the same area, insurance is going to go up, that means housing prices are going to get lower, and it's going to have a big knock-on effect on the local community. So uh, recurring damage, they won't want to be keep on paying out. So they'll either put the prices up, or they'll say, no, we don't want to be a part of it. And that, uh, that can lead to the area becoming rougher or get a bad reputation. So people might say, I don't want to go there because this happens and it's got a bad name. So, um, which is obviously a big negative effect for residents nearby who have done nothing wrong and it's um, a shame that it's affecting them when they do nothing wrong. So, graffiti, it affects everybody and we've all seen it. Um, Graffiti uh, will affect the local area and we've also seen graffiti on stuff like motorways where people from all around the United Kingdom will go on and you can still see this. Now it can have abusive language on there or it might just be a normal like picture or random words. Now if it's abusive language obviously that's going to be more serious but um, any graffiti is still going to cost a lot of money to repair as you have to call in special team to come and take out the graffiti and maybe even put graffiti resistant paint on the walls to make sure that it doesn't keep on happening. As, um, um, as I've said here, graffiti cost the city of Chicago, in, they have a budget of $6.2 million to spend on re, um, getting rid of the graffiti. And obviously that money could be spent on something else, for example, uh, investing into the community, building houses, upgrading stuff or whatever, but uh, it hasn't. Um, so then, moving on to, oh uh, yeah, and it will waste a lot of money which could be put into better things. Moving on to violence against a person. So if there's violence against a person, it can leave them with things like anxiety, uh, feeling afraid so they might not want to go out, they might not want to go and have fun with the friends. Um, it can leave them not being able to sleep and, and worrying about themselves or their family members. Um, so it's the family's safety and their safety which might concern them. And it could make them feel angry towards the people who are committing this crime and they could even go out and try and retaliate, which is always the worst thing to do. So um, this violence, it can, it can make them feel bad. Say you've experienced a bad thing such as a mugging, if you've been mugged then you'll have a fear of it almost and then you might not go out again. So then, um, on to the public perception of crime. So then, 
this is going to be talking a bit about my own opinion and a bit about me here and the people around us. So the public perception of crime is not very often correct. For example, they imagine it to be higher in some places than it is. For example, a place with a bad reputation might not always have the highest crime committed rate, but um, it might be expected to be so high and some places will be much lower. Um, for example, in a posh area, now it's expected that a crime rate will be low because it's a posh area and you're thinking that the people usually don't commit crimes in that area, but you would be wrong because a lot of burglaries and muggings and stealings happen in this area as, it's, as, it's, as if that they have more money or they have more expensive property and possessions. So people might go there because that's why they think best. Um, so if it's filled with wealthy people and expensive uh, belongings, then that might be the reason why a muggings and burglaries occur. So um, the air, from my own experience, I live in an area which I thought had the low crime rate because it's got all around, it's got nice places, wealthy people there, and I wouldn't expect much crime to be committed in there. But uh, the, road that, the road which I live next to, so the road away from mine, it turns out to be the most burglar, has the most reports of burglaries in the whole of Walsall and Wolverhampton last year. Uh, the like, road with the most burglaries there. And I, I always class it as a posh and expensive street, but that's where, the, that's where a lot of burglaries occur due to the vault. Um, so, due to media influence, now you always hear in the news or through the media, uh, such as newspapers and other things. That crime rate are at its worst case. So they might be saying it's been the worst that we've had for years. And sometimes you might hear that crime is gone completely. They don't commit stabbings or they might, they might not commit that. When they're not exactly true, they might just be over exaggerating it um, to try and get viewers or readers if it's a newspaper. Because they want, at the end of the day, they are a selling company trying to make a profit. So they'll sometimes twist the story and uh, exaggerated for their own benefits. Um, so if they're saying that the crime rate is its, its lowest in years and it's no problem, then that, that could make you feel, yeah, I'm safe, I don't have to worry about anything, and it can leave you feeling fine and safe. But if they start saying it's at the worst for years and there's been lots of stabbings and other crime committed, then um, it might leave you feeling scared or worried about things that you shouldn't have to be worried about. Um, so then, going on to the fear of crime. So the fear of crime can be developed by a few ways, really. First way, it could be an experience that you have. Say you get mugged, then you will have a fear of muggings and other problems occurring. So, go on, pause it there, and I'll walk in.